2015. And former Senator Joe Donnelly joins me now here on set. Thank you, sir, for uh, for taking a few Good minutes. Morning. Well, Thanks for having me. Um, Good it's, afternoon. <laughs> it's, it is the afternoon, um, and it's not a pleasant memory for you, but this was the other story for Democrats in 2018. On the yeah. House side, they won 40 seats. They won back control. The suburbs, you know, kind of were on fire for them. But on the Senate side, in places like Indiana, in places like North Dakota, in places like rural Tennessee, Republicans came out strong uh, for Trump and against the Democratic Party. What was fueling that? Well, to give you an idea, I got more votes in this election than any Democrat in a midterm in the history of the state of Indiana. And it wasn't enough because Donald Trump came six times in the last month and a half, three times in the last 10 days. And his message was, who shares your values? If you don't vote for uh, Mike Braun, who is running, then you're betraying Donald Trump. And he talked about caravans and he said, Democrats don't respect borders. And um, did, did the caravan work in Indiana? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. A hundred percent, because the discussion was, well, if the Democrats won't respect borders, the next thing you know is that they'll be in your hometown. So what do and, Democrats say to that? And so what we say is we do respect borders, that we believe in strong borders, that we believe in our country. Uh, being but they for were saying that in 2018, so what, what wasn't getting through? Well, being for DACA children doesn't mean you're not for strong borders. And the interpretation from the president was that, you know, Democrats want to let everybody in. What you have to do is talk on a constant basis. I went to all 92 counties every single year. In Wisconsin, you mentioned we lost by 22,000 votes to Democrats. You have to be in Menominee. You have to be in Marinette in Wisconsin. You have to be in Kenosha. You have to be in Racine. In Michigan, you have to be in Muskegon. You have to be in Flint. In Pennsylvania, you have to be in Johnstown and Allentown and Erie. Those are the places where this is going to be decided. And every extra vote you get makes a difference. 11,000 in Michigan. Well, you know, if we had better turnout in places like Traverse City, we do better. But does this does, does your experience in 2018 raise a, a concern that this is ultimately national, that you were in all these places? You did do uh, right. by the book all the things you're supposed to do to have a chance. And were you just overwhelmed by when people turn on television, turn on social media, the versions of the parties they get through that? Yeah, but you do everything you can to move the needle. For instance, Donald Trump won by 19 points. I lost by five. We made up 14. So you can make up a good portion of this. If you make up 14 points in Pennsylvania and in Wisconsin and in Michigan, then a strong Democratic candidate can be the president. And so the goal is to continue to work every single day to help move the numbers by sharing the fact that we also believe in faith and in family and in country and that not just one party is strong on faith, that we share those goals, that not just one party is strong on family that we share those goals. And, and it's important to do because this election, as you mentioned, it's coming through the heartland. That's where I live. Chris Matthews mentioned this in the first segment, but you mentioned faith, you mentioned family. How much is the issue of abortion? I, I can count on one hand the number of pro-life Democrats who are now in Congress. Probably can count on one hand the number of pro-choice Republicans in Congress, but the parties nationally seem to have sorted themselves out. Is that a deal breaker for a big number of voters in Indiana? Oh, yeah, 100 um, percent. What it is, is that people want to know that uh, things like the Hyde Amendment in 1975 was put in place, that no federal funds would be used for abortion. That's been respected for 40 plus years. Um, people understand that. People have come to um, uh, an agreement on that. And then you see that it's pushed out even further that, you know what, we're going to let federal funds be used. At that point, a lot of folks just say, I can't go there. I'm not going there with that party. And then you talk about 11,000 votes being the difference in a place like Michigan, which has a, a heavy evangelical, heavy Catholic vote. Um, those kind of things, um, there's been an understanding for a long time to try to keep it, as, as Bill Clinton said, safe and legal and rare was the, the long time discussion. I happen to be a pro-life Democrat. And when that understanding was in place, it, um, it went much better for the Democratic Party. As you push out that border, What's happening is you're starting to lose mainstream, moderate families throughout the Midwest. Very quickly, the, the news of the day, Joe Biden, he says he can beat Trump. He says he can win back some uh, Trump voters who, would, uh, who, who defected from the Democrats. Can't, do you agree? Do you think he can win? And, and would you be with him? Um, I, I'm not going to endorse anybody, but I support a whole bunch of them. 
including Joe Biden. And uh, I sure do think he can beat Trump. Let me tell you a very quick story about Joe Biden that tells you all you need to know. On election night, when it was when it, when the race was called, I think it was called by you. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were among those who called it. <laughs> and um, when it was called, my phone rang, and I went into the other room to take the call. And my daughter came in right after the call, and she said, "Was that Joe Biden?" I said, "Yes, it was." He called just to say how bad he felt. And, she, and I said, "How'd you know?" She goes, "Because that's who Joe Biden is, and that's who he is to this country." He has made a, a lot of friends that way through the years, through personal outreach, through staying in touch. I, I've heard a lot of stories like that. It's, it's a fascinating thing to yeah. hear. Uh, Joe Donnelly, former senator from India. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you very much. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Meet the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.